and it's not a religion, but it does request that you should believe in the existence of a supreme being. And you should find a church or a faith and participate in that. Uh, and from time immemorial, it has been a custom among the fraternity of free and accepted Masons, at the request of a brother and his family, to accompany him to this place of interment and there leave him with the solemn formalities of the craft. In conformity with that usage and in accordance with the esteem we owe to our departed brother, we are assembled in the character of Masons to offer up to his memory before the world a last esteem for him. Our brother has reached the end of his toilsome journey. From his nerveless grasp has dropped forever the working tools of this life. The golden silver thread is severed. The golden bowl is broken. The pitcher is broken at the fountain and the wheel is broken at the cistern. The dust has returned to the earth as it was and the spirit has returned to God who gave it. Brother Chaplin, would you? Heavenly Father, as we come to perform the final act of parting from our brother and to dedicate this stone to his memory, grant that we may have an inspired vision to enable us to look with faith beyond the veil, that our hearts may know the continuing presence of the soul now set free from the limitations of mortality. We pray thee to give us strength to bear our daily burdens until we too shall enter into the celestial lodge above, to dwell with those who have served with us here until time shall be no more. Our brother has been raised to that blissful lodge. There, under the protection of the all-seeing eye, amid the smiles of immutable love, in that house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. There may Almighty God, in his infinite mercy, grant that we may meet again to part no more. This lambskin apron is an emblem of innocence and the distinguished badge of a mason, more ancient than the golden fleece or Roman eagle, and when honorably worn, more honorable than, uh, than this. hi there, you done snuck in on us, <laughs> and when worthily worn, more honorable than the star and garter or any other order that earthly powers can confer. By it we are admonished that purity of life and rectitude of conduct are so essentially necessary to us gaining admission into the celestial lodge above where the supreme grand master of the universe presides. This evergreen, which once marked a temporary resting place of one illustrious and Masonic history, is a reminder to us that we too have an imperishable part within our souls which will never, never die. And like this sprig of acacia, may we know through faith that our souls may hereafter spring to life in heaven ever after. Can we have the brothers uh, gather up these sprigs of acacia and place them on the grave. I have a little family history instead of some some of the other Masonic, uh, we'd like to just uh, offer our condolences to the family and again appreciate your attendance in bringing this out. I know that uh, after he passed away on uh, May the 30th or 31st, I, and uh, he had a, a short illness from May the 8th, he entered the hospital at Ray, Arizona, and then upon his death, uh, he died of pneumonia. He had uh, pleurisy and they couldn't cure that. We'd, and pneumonia then set in with being in the hospital. Um, 
we have medicines today that uh, can probably cure that. But at 63 years old, he was at the, over the age of uh, the average that uh, lived. We didn't have any uh, electricity. We didn't have any hardly any telephones. You know, your services, uh, no refrigeration unless you were in. They didn't come in until at the end of his life. So his uh, first business meetings and work around Wilcox was uh, pretty hot, dry, dusty, or if it wasn't that, it'd be flooding and water and uh, a mess. You know, the Arizona was a real tough territory. And some of the history that we have, Pablo, his brother, was uh, actually older, born in 50, 1857. <coughs> and after uh, he went to uh, the family was one of the first original 100 uh, Mexican families out of Mexico that were brought into Costa County, California to help settle that area. And in 1857 Pablo was born and then Mariano followed in 59. And uh, Pablo uh, went to college and uh, got a, an education uh, near San Francisco at St. Mary's College from which he graduated in 1877. Almost immediately he started uh, out in the world to face the responsibilities and discouragements and upon settling in Tucson he was engaged in the educational work in the public schools for four years. It, became necessary for him to resign his occupation at the time of his father's death in 1881, at which time he was called to the former home site to settle the estate and remained in Contra Costa County for about a year. Upon returning to Arizona, he secured a position as salesman at the Norton and Stewart, uh, now Norton Company which is the old commercial, which was the longest continuously operating retail establishment in the state of Arizona. In fact, Cochise County was the largest uh, money producing county in the whole state for several years because of the mines and the growth and the agricultural that was uh, in that area until the decline later on in the building of Maricopa County. Anyhow, he started off as a salesman at the Norton Stewart, uh, which he remained there for three years, and then he became identified with the mercantile house of John C. Fall, a merchant known uh, as the whole Pacific Coast for six years. He was their bookkeeper for the firm. In 1888, he made such rapid strides in confidence of his employer himself, he and his brother, M.J. Mariano Soto, were taken in as partners with the association. And it continued until the death of Mr. Fall and the brothers purchased from the heirs of the mercantile business the business for $42,000 in 1895. Mrs. Fall is the sister of Judge Thornton, formerly of the Supreme Court of California, and one John C. Fall's daughters is the wife of Admiral Rogers of the United States Navy and another the daughter of his wife and ex-governor. Governor Kincaid of New Nevada. Pablo actually joined the lodge later than Mariano. Mariano was initiated in early 1895, passed and raised in August of 1895. Mariano uh, did not join until uh, 1903. I mean, not Mariano. Pablo, Pablo sorry. Some of the other history that uh, we have. Oh, is uh, from the Arizona Range News, which is the local newspaper in Wilcox. Upon his death, it says, the death of M.J. Soto. Word came Wednesday, and you have to appreciate some of the writing. Uh, it's kind of funny wording. 
Word came Wednesday morning that MJ Soto died Tuesday at the hospital at Ray. The number of years he was resided in Winkleman and recently had been in bad health. Some time ago he went to the hospital at Ray where he came to end Tuesday where where the end came, I'm sorry. Tuesday his remains were shipped to Tucson where the burial took place. The funeral was in charge of the Knights Templar Lodge in that city of which he was a member. We, I thought for sure that he may have been a member of the Bisbee York Rite bodies because um, they started in 1895 with their and in the statehood they had 145 members but he was very active and got around and and had joined the York Rite bodies in Tucson um, but being raised in uh, 1895 he quickly rose through the ranks and was master of Wilcox Lodge number 10 in 1900 and then uh, quickly assumed other jobs as we do today you become this and that and uh, then uh, later on the Soto resided there for many years of being a, a mercantile business the firm of Soto Brothers was one of the principal businesses and houses in Wilcox for many years some 15 years ago he left for Mexico where he resided until about seven years ago when he re returned and took up residence in Winkleman Arizona he leaves quite a family of grown-up children all of them being married his brother, Pablo B. Soto, is now the manager of the Renault stores in Cortland and Gleason and attended the funeral at Tucson, as did a number of his children. Well, being all grown, and here you have uh, the business in Winkleman, the brother uh, behind Tombstone, Cortland, Gleason, and that. Uh, it was just quite a, a traveling point. And like all of the, the other family members had went to back home or around dispersed being married, the grave was left unattended and that's why we found it here with the help of uh, Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl, <laughs> yes. Cheryl. And, uh, and so now we have that recognized when someone walks up there and says, oh yes, I remember my uncle. Oh, he only passed away 96 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> anything that had a mercantile around the Wilcox area or whatever they the first business that they bought for $42,000 in 1895 in 2000 I mean 1900 I'm sorry that store netted $150,000 and they had gone out to the Pierce store and built the Soto Brothers store and mercantile out there because the gold mine out there and it netted a hundred thousand. So that's a lots of troubles and and my historian that dug up some of this information has an actual receipt from the Soto Brothers store cool. for uh, two pair of Levi's, a pair of boots, and a couple of shirts for twenty bucks. Wow. <laughs> when we were there and looking at their house that was being restored, but one of the old or cupboards in oh. that store at the back of it said Soda Brothers Mercantile on the back of that piece of furniture. So oh that, yes. Yeah. Wow. In fact, the Soto Brothers did not have tokens for their business as a lot of them did, but they had their own script, which was money. And on the bank they had it uh, a deposit of gold to cover the the script. So then on his death certificate though, it shows that uh, a date of birth, unknown. And then uh, that he was 63 years old. He was a merchant by trade, birthplace, unknown. Name of father, mother, all of them, all unknown. They didn't research or hunt very hard because none of the other family was near Winkleman. Uh, where was he born? I don't know. 
unknown and so they and they just signed it off that he went into the hospital on May the 8th with pleurisy and part of his failing health and then died on the, at 6 uh, 15 the night of May 31st and then the, this was all signed off on June the 17th and for the report So that's some, a basic, some of the history that I have on uh, both Pablo and Marion. And she said Pablo had went back to Los Angeles with the, the Renald Soto uh, store. Uh, this Renald was a, a wealthy rancher that came in and any place that he moved to for a big ranch, he would buy a mercantile or build one so that he would have wholesale uh, commodities for the ranch and so I'm sure that he probably come up to uh, the Soto brothers and says I'm moving into town we bought a uh, however many acres of uh, ranch and we would like uh, to either buy you out and then Pablo was later his manager for both stores and, uh, and then he went off to L.A. I don't know what year, but it was uh, some of the other history. And now the store in Pierce has been completely restored. The lady that had it uh, 30 years ago moved in and had an antique store. And then she built living quarters in the back. And then a friend bought the post office across the street and restored it. And she was selling pottery and whatever in her husband helped restore that building and then uh, Ginger's husband passed away and next door to the mercantile he built a life size of uh, a blacksmith shop and had a stack of horseshoes about yay high and uh, we were in there several times and knew both her and Fred. Uh, Fred had been uh, uh, a mechanic for the Ford garage for years and years until he'd met and married Ginger. He passed away and then she was in ill health and sold that uh, building and uh, to the gal at the post office and so now they tore that all and rebuilt it all new glass windows and uh, restored all of the stucco fence around it it's really pretty if you want a chance to get out to Cochise I have some pictures of it I'll thumb them up here and show them in a minute Brother Craig, did you have something that you were wanting to add? First Brother Mitch, no, not, not really. Just would like to say on behalf of the Grand Lodge of Arizona, uh, we are absolutely delighted that this came to be, that we have brothers all over the state in graveyards very similar to this that have unmarked graves. And it's a real shame that their history and their life is lost in the sands of time. And so congratulations to Wilcox Lodge and to all of you who helped put this together and place a headstone on our worthy brother because it means a lot to us as well as to his family. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just add a little bit to that. I'd like to thank Builders Lodge number 60. Uh, whenever, uh, I think you may have called me four or five years ago or three or whenever it was and uh, said that we'll, we really didn't have any funds for a headstone. We normally don't do that. And uh, uh, Builders Lodge number 60 got wind of that and said, oh, every past master ought to have a headstone. And so I'm, and Brother Settlemeyer was the uh, master of that. And I said, well, you know, Wilcox Lodge number 10, we're not broke. And we certainly don't think that uh, uh, builders, out of the goodness of their heart, and so we, funded the project and, and I too agree that it's nice to walk by and and then I was explaining to the family the difference in the square and the compasses and explained that the G was for God and geometry and at the bottom of the past master's jewel and not every mason is in the line or a past master but their their first three degrees of masonry 
even though you may receive higher degrees through other affiliations and what have you, uh, whenever we all step down on the floor, we're all level as brothers. And so no matter how high your numbers or whatever other degrees you get, you're never any greater than the third degree of Mason or a Master Mason, part of the fraternal organization. Brother Chaplin, do you have a closing prayer before we ask the... I do. If you want to read a poem... I do. After we do the... Or do you want to do add you want, the poem? Do you want to... Uh... That'd be wonderful. Go ahead and do that. Okay. And then we'll just have Okay, a... then, then we'll have the closing prayer. I just prayer. wanted to give um, a little <clears throat> note of appreciation to to the Masonic Lodge and to Cheryl for and to Rod and to Rod for putting this. <laughs> yeah. we'll talk to Cheryl at least once a month for four years <laughs> since 2014. <laughs> so, but um, just a little family history. M.J. Soto was um, my great grandfather on my mother's side. Um, M.J. Soto and Grandma Bell, which was his wife, they had three children, all girls, born in Wilcox. Our, our grandmother, Armenia, was the middle daughter. She was born in 1884. She married and had six children, five girls and one boy. Cheryl's husband, Victor, is the son of the boy child. <clears throat> Yvonne's mother, Velma, was the fourth child born, and my mother, Valeria, was the fifth child born. The youngest daughter and the last surviving child Vernice is 96 and now lives with her daughter in Boston. But a funny story is that her mother, which was um, Mariano's daughter, when she got word that he had died, she was living in Yuma. Her and her husband were living in Yuma and she was pregnant with Vernice. So Vernice says, I was at the funeral even though I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> she came to the service. But anyway, that's a little history of how we're all connected um, in the family. And the poem I'd like to read is called Dear Ancestor. <clears throat> it was written by a gentleman, Walter Butler Palmer, and then I kind of wordsmithed it a little bit so that it was appropriate for this service. It goes like this. Your graveside stood among the rest, unmarked and all alone. Now the name and dates are chiseled out on our newly placed headstone. It reaches out to all who care. It is too late to mourn. You did not know that we exist. You died and we were born. Yet each of us are cells of you in flesh, in blood, in bone. Our blood contracts and beats a pulse entirely not on our own. Dear Ancestor, the place you filled 100 years ago spreads out among the ones you left who would have loved you so. We wonder if you lived and loved. We wonder if you knew that someday we would find this spot and come to visit you. Oh, wow. Nice. For a closing prayer, almighty and most merciful God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we do most earnestly beseech thee, as we now surround the grave of our fallen brother, to deeply impress upon our minds the solemnities of this day. May we ever remember that in the midst of life we are in death, and so to live and act our several parts as we will desire to have done when the hour of our departure is at hand. Gracious Father, we pray for thy divine assistance to redeem our misspent time and the discharge of the duties thou hast assigned us. May we have wisdom from on high to direct us, strength equal to our task to support us, and the beauty of holiness to render our deeds acceptable in thy sight. And at last, when our work on earth is done and death shall call us from our labors, may we obtain everlasting rest in that spiritual house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Amen. That concludes our Masonic service that was not really a Masonic service because <laughs> although it, and it says on his death certificate was his name John Mariano? Uh, or Mariano? Mariano John. Mariano John. Oh.
Okay, because they had it reversed here on right. the full name of uh, J.M. Right. You didn't fix that yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was probably yeah, that's one, a, not John. That, that's better than like the parents of all unknown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 